good to be chatting with you again, man. I, I like to take care there because it's optimistic, right? People do get rich off crashes. Some people who timed it after the sell-off, <laughs> yes, or last year, were able to profit in the recovery here. But talk to me about what you're watching and what has you so concerned about what could spark the biggest crash in world history. Well, uh, as my uh, friend here, Jim Records, you know, we're the old guys here, and we've experienced enough crashes in our lifetime. But what Jim says is quite accurate is the next crash is the is basically an avalanche waiting for the last snowflake. And since 2008, all they've been doing is piling more um, debt onto the mountainside, and they're just waiting for the next snowflake to hit. And it's going to be the biggest in world history. I thought COVID was it, but they just added more <laughs> debt onto the avalanche site. <laughs> yeah, and, and continue to print. And we've seen kind of concerns about how we get out of that debt pile. Uh, and it sounds like you're leaning into Bitcoin and gold. Uh, I mean, we've heard a lot of traditional investors leaning into Bitcoin as a hedge. Uh, <clears throat> Kevin O'Leary as well noted he's got, what, 3% in his portfolio. Uh, how large of a portfolio position is it for you though and how large should it be for maybe the average investor watching this to protect themselves well let me give you the macro because everybody goes micro on me this here <laughs> is a 10 10 million dollar zimbabwe dollar this is the u.s dollar you know i mean if you're waiting for the u.s dollar to become 10 million that's not that intelligent but that's what they teach you to do in school is go to school and get a job and work for this garbage and this here is $2,000 worth of gold in one concentrated form. And this here is a, a US silver, silver eagle. That's about $25. So I just compared this garbage here to what they, to what gold, silver, and Bitcoin is. So I'm, in one of my tweets, I said, I'm waiting for uh, Bitcoin to hit 24. I entered at nine. And I'm, I'm still in the money and I'm very happy it's coming down so I can buy more. Simple. Yeah, I guess I guess the question is, is those people who maybe didn't get in, right? Or maybe got in at the all time highs, we saw at 62,000. Uh, those people might be a little bit more worried about what could happen here. Uh, the people like myself and you who have been in this for a bit might be fine uh, because they've already seen it proven out. But I mean, when you look at it, uh, how do you see it going? If it does dip down further, I know you're going to be a buyer, but, but what do you see as kind of those catalysts that does take the price of Bitcoin higher now? Well, again, I said this is the problem. It's called the Zimbabwe dollar or the U.S. dollar. That's the real problem. So I just watched that sideshow with this guy Powell, Yellen, uh, what's his name, Biden, and uh, <laughs> those characters. And I just gauge off of them. Whatever they're doing, I'm not going to do. But that's I've been that way most of my life. Some people call me a contrarian. I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a capitalist. Uh, I don't own any stocks. I don't like stocks. But I don't have to own stocks because I'm an entrepreneur. I build my own assets. Like the Rich Dad Company is an international brand. And a brand is what Buffett invests in like McDonald's yeah. or Gillette or Coca-Cola. So to the young people, I say, don't be an employee. Why don't you become an entrepreneur like Gates or Musk or those characters? And then you get really rich. But if you can just sit there and play the stock market, you may as well play Bitcoin too. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, I'd be curious to get your take, too. I mean, I guess we, we've seen, you know, obviously in personal finance, buying a house is always a big question. And, and I wonder what that would look like, too, if you're expecting maybe the value of the dollar to go down or inflation to take off. Obviously, if you take out a mortgage uh, and you take on big debt, it's easier to pay back if inflation does surge. So how are you giving advice maybe on that front when it comes to real estate and what you're seeing play out there? Well, it's not real estate. It's debt. You see, I mean, this guy, what's his name? Uh, I forgot his name now, good friend of mine, but I have, I'm having the Biden effect. He says, live debt free. Are you crazy? In 1971, the US dollar became debt. So every time I have a chance to buy real estate, I, I borrow as much money as I can. So I think I'm about 1.2 billion in debt because debt became money in 1971. But what these other goofballs are saying is that get out of debt, live debt free. Well, that's a choice you make. So I just don't do that. I own a lot of real estate. 
And every month I make millions of dollars a month in cash flow and I pay no taxes because the tax system incentivizes people who use debt. So everything they teach you in business school is a bunch of BS. You know, I mean, the real guys like Trump, I know Trump's not popular, but he's a good friend of mine and we're in debt up to our eyeballs and we pay no taxes. So that's what we teach. And it's different than everybody else. I'm not saying having a stock portfolio is right or wrong, but there's other alternatives you can do. If just open your eyes and see how the rich are really getting richer. Yeah, especially if you believe in, in kind of the inflation picture that you see coming here or, or the big market crash is coming as you see it here. Uh, but there is one point that I guess maybe people have been looking at too and the, the idea uh, of a central bank digital currency potentially coming out and what that might mean for cryptocurrencies out there. It of course wouldn't necessarily solve the problem uh, of governments and the way that they interact with their own currencies there. So, so how do you see maybe uh, a bad digital dollar coming out, Chinese obviously working on their own central bank digital currency right now. How do you see that impacting the crypto market? Well, I think that's the most important question you could ask today. Everybody should be asking. It's just not if, it's just when does the yuan become crypto, when the dollar become crypto or the Fed coin? And then what will that do to the banking system? I hear all kinds of wild predictions. I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but I just keep an open mind. The same with, with, with uh, Bitcoin. When it was 20,000 and far more, everybody was afraid of missing out. I just waited till it crashed. So as soon as the uh, Fed coin comes out, I'm gonna wait for the next crash. And the next crash may be all those banks that are you guys are advertising as handing out dividend checks right now. One prediction I hear is that when the Fed coin comes out, you don't need you don't need Wells Fargo, you don't need Bank of America, you don't need Goldman Sachs anymore, because we'll be completely communist. We'd be 100% central banking, central planned economy. So that's what I'm watching right now, and I don't know which way it's going to go. But I think we'd all better pay attention to what happens when the Fed coin comes out. Yeah, we've seen, just to wrap up here, I mean, we've seen some bold calls before, uh, world's largest crash in history. I'm going to classify that as pretty bold. But if you can hone in on maybe what it looks like, the timeline of it, how quickly you're expecting something like that to happen, if you are expecting runaway inflation uh, or the crash. I mean, how big are we talking to be the world's biggest and, and how quickly? Well, that's another, that's another speculation. Is it inflation or deflation? I think it's deflation because you just can't keep print, printing money when it crashes. But I'm prepared to go either way. The thing I say to young people, because Yahoo is for young people, I would say be an entrepreneur, be a capitalist and build a business that does well in crashes, booms or busts. So like Rich Dad does extremely well in booms, but it does very well in busts. That's what Nazim Taleb calls uh, anti-fragile. The more it crashes, the stronger the company gets. So if I could encourage young people, don't go to school, become an employee, you know, follow my rich dad's advice and become an entrepreneur, a capitalist and build businesses that create jobs. I mean, this this Biden and Kamala, I mean, what, what the hell are they doing paying people not to work? The only way money is created is via production and we're paying people billions not to work. Oh, my God, that's communism. <laughs>